What's going on guys? Got a brand new Blu-ray review for you guys today. Today we're discussing Solo, a Star Wars story. Yeah, let's talk about it. Solo, a Star Wars story, of course, is the film that didn't do that well at the box office. I enjoyed it though. You guys can catch my earlier review on this. Now I'm revisiting this, revisiting the Blu-ray, talking about all the special features on here, and discussing how this film holds up at home. Now, back in the theater, my thoughts on it, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a blast. I think it, if this title is Solo, A Star Wars Story, and I think if you're telling a Star Wars story, this is the perfect interpretation of it. It's going on an adventure, a fun adventure within the Star Wars lore, and that was one of my favorite parts about Solo. I thought it was so much fun. Yeah, there's dumb things that they explained for Han Solo that they didn't need to. The way that they he got his name, dumb, stupid, we didn't need it. But still, it was a blast to watch. There's some fantastic action sequences, and I'll go as far to say this film is more gritty than Rogue One. Gritty in a lot of ways, within its action sequences, within its storytelling, and going in and delving in to the dark depths of the underworld area within Star Wars, you know, with the the mobsters, the gangsters, the mercenaries, all sorts of people like that, the bad people that you don't want to get involved with within the Star Wars universe, but if you do, they can make a quick buck for you. It's a part of the universe that I've been wanting to see within this movie's universe that we've seen in small tidbits, but this film actually goes very much deeper into it, and I really appreciated that aspect of this movie. Probably the best aspect of it. Of course, I'm going to say no spoilers because I don't want to get into it, but there's some awesome character moments moments in here. I think Alden did a fantastic job as Han Solo. I think he fit the role. Donald Glover steals the role as Lando, and I loved him, but without a doubt, the two best characters in here, personally for me, was Chewbacca. He was fantastic. He's if you want more Chewbacca in Star Wars, this is a movie for you. Also, Khaleesi herself playing Kira in here was superb. She was my favorite part. I actually want a solo film of her like now. I think she was hands down carried some of the mo best moments of her and she was more than just a one note character. She had layers to her. Was Ron Howard of course directed this film. He went into it. He directed the movie and he took a charge of Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Now of course that's where I'm going to kind of get into the special effects. I think Ron Howard did a decent job directing this film. There are some slow pace moments in here that I think there could have been some more energetic fun in here and I'm still like I want to see Chris Miller and Phil Lord's cuts, or at least some moments to them, because I know a majority of this film was reshot, even though they said it wasn't, it was. Um, but in some of the scenes, you can still keep intact, and they do still talk about that in some of the special features, which, like the Chewbacca sequence, when Han meets Chewie, all of that is Phil Lord and Chris Miller, which, it feels like it. I like that. How does this movie hold up at home? I I'm revisiting. It's stunning. Uh, I mean, for me, I think this is one of the best looking movies in the Star Wars universe. You got Bradford Young being the cinematographer on here, and he does such a fantastic job in here. He did Arrival a couple years back, which that movie was stunning. It's probably the best looking film that year, and I think he does a great job with Solo as well. Doing different camera angles and also getting different types of light. It's a little bit darker of a film because he uses a lot of actual natural lighting, but for some reason, I appreciate that more, and I think a lot of the landscaping using actual locations really does help, especially within Solo. The audio is great in here. I think the score really fits the tone of it i think the way that it's moving when all the ships when all the battles are going through especially flying through millennium falcon when he's doing all the runs and through it the the one of the sequences towards the end where he's flying the millennium falcon going through all these different portals and having to hit the parsecs and stuff awesome one of the best sequences in the whole movie itself you you see him going through these clouds you see him fighting through this and just it, the one the cinematography again Two, the sounds are just screeching, echoing, and just great. And when I say screeching, in a good way. And, of course, just the special effects in the direction. It's tense. Even though you know what's going to happen, it's still tense. We get special features on this film. Now, let me tell you, I little bit disappointed. I get they're not going to go into the controversy and stuff. That's not something they want out leaked out in the open. I'm sure Chris Miller and Phil Lord don't want that in the open. I wanted a little bit more of that. Ron Howard came in very late into production, and there's a part where it's a round tape. The director pretty much sits there and talks to the cast about production, and there wasn't a lot of details about that. It was just the normal stuff that you would hear within a Star Wars movie. Without a doubt, one of the coolest things that they do have in the special features is there's a brilliant action sequence towards the beginning of this film where it takes place on a train, and you probably do see it in the trailer, but they do go into more details on that, and I think that was a really cool special feature that they did add in here. Really, everything else is just smaller details within certain sequences or relationships, say a relationship with Chewbacca and Han, or one of the, some of the other sequences with their practical effects or the flying ships, but one of the other best notable things is Kazan on Kazan, which is two 
too because this film was written by Lawrence Kasdan and his son and that was really cool to watch because you get both of them talking about something that's really been a big part of their life and I it's one of the most easily the best part about the special features also this film is worth watch if you have not seen solo Star Wars Story, I think this film is more particularly pointed at people who are not the biggest Star Wars fans to be honest a lot of people I know who aren't the biggest Star Wars fans love this movie and Star Wars fans in general who did actually go out and see the movie because I know this film again did not do good at the box office it, it was not good marketing I, I thought it was bad marketing it just no one knew it came out and I know people who think now it's coming out in December no it's coming out on blu-ray this week check it out on Tuesday it's a film that I think if you missed in the theaters you got to give it at least a shot don't wait till Netflix, give it a shot, rent it at Redbox, buy it on Blu-ray. I know for sure I'm going to be upgrading to the 4K because I, I need to see the 4K version. I, the, the cinematography is way too beautiful not to be viewed on 4K. As much as people will say, well, there's not a lot of stakes, there's not a lot of like new stuff in here, again, I don't think that's what this film was going for, and if it was, then it failed. But for me, I wanted a fun Star Wars adventure. You get that fun Star Wars adventure. There's not a lot to it, but there is a lot of fun elements to it. You get some dynamics between Han and Chewie, which are hands down the best part about it. Kira is fantastic in here, played by, of course, Khaleesi herself from Game of Thrones. Woody Harrelson's fantastic. The villain is actually a little bit underwhelming, but not bad. And there's a lot of Easter eggs in here, some that work 100%, and some that could have been a little bit better. But Solo Star Wars Story, again, revisiting it, I enjoyed it as much as I did with watching it in the theaters. I think this is a film that you guys will enjoy too, so if, the, if you haven't seen Solo, definitely will say it's worth watching. Tell me guys, are you guys going to be picking up Solo this week? Are you going to hold off till it goes on cheaper? Let's talk about it down below in the comments, and of course, if you're new here, hit up Sandwich on Films also down below, because right down there, you guys can get into advanced movie screens, check out some movie news, and even some movie reviews. But of course, guys, until next time, stay classy.